Hi, everybody. Welcome to our special CXO series. I'm Dave Vellante. We're here high above courtside, as they say, above the New York Stock Exchange trading floor. This is our CXO series. I'm super excited to have Ivana Delevska here. She's the Chief Investment Officer of Spear Invest. Good to see you face to face. Thanks for having we, me. We've done a number of segments on breaking analysis. And, you know, you know, I love how you go deep into the supply chain. Uh, I've often said you're like a sort of mini, mini Kathy Wood, you know, looking at the hot companies. But the difference is you have a, a different trading strategy. Talk about how you go deep into the value chain and do additional research, not just absorbing the, the, the sell side analysts, but going deeper and doing your own research. That's right, Dave. So thanks for having me. We cover about 120 companies that we speak to on an ongoing basis. And then out of those conversations, we narrow down to themes that are interesting and where we see a lot of changes going on. So this is how we usually identify the investment opportunities. So this is how we're able to spot trends like AI. We were very early on to this just because we were able to see where industrial companies were investing their R&D dollars and how everybody was using the NVIDIA as a base for building their AI applications. So the big themes in the market today, um, I, and I'm interested in how you see the climate. Obviously, you're invested. NVIDIA is your biggest holding. You're invested in a couple other semiconductor stocks. We'll talk about that. You're pretty deep into cybersecurity and SaaS. Um, how do you see the climate today? And, and, and of course, the AI is the big tailwind. But how do you see it all shaping up? Well, that's right, Dave. So AI is really the tailwind behind all three or four teams that were invested today. The hardware space is the most um, further along the way. I would say these companies are already seeing hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue. So NVIDIA is already seeing over $100 billion of revenue coming from, from AI. We expect AMD, Broadcom, Marvell will be the next one to see significant tailwinds. So this is where you're seeing it show up in the numbers. For the rest of the value chain, companies that play in the infrastructure layer, so this would be cybersecurity, cloud infrastructure, right? Those are not seeing it just yet. So they do have like few hundred million dollar contributions for each company from AI or AI products they, that they have launched, but it's not really game changing for them just yet. Let's, let's dig into NVIDIA a little bit. And I want to ask you about some of the other names that you mentioned, but your thesis on a lot of people were freaked out because, oh, Blackwell's delayed. But it looked like the demand for, you know, Hopper was still very, very strong. You weren't concerned about that. Well, explain your thesis on NVIDIA. Well, Blackwell is a big deal for the company, so it's not surprising that all eyes are on Blackwell. Hopper was a very strong product, very strong introduction, and we still see companies saying that they're buying Hopper and that the math works for them renting these, uh, these GPUs. Blackwell, though, will be a game changer because it offers a significant performance improvement. And this is really, if you look at what's going on in hardware and AI development, really the bottleneck is performance improvement. Jensen expect, expects as much as 1,000 times improvement from where we are today. And I think this is why you're not seeing any different or meaningfully different applications coming to market. You really need to see the hardware improve significantly from these levels. And Blackware is, is just one step in that direction. The other point you make is, and this is oftentimes get lost, gets, gets lost on folks. People think NVIDIA is a, a, a chip company, but they're really a systems company. Of course, Jensen makes that point a lot. Of, of course, they have software and, and uh, they sell a lot of hardware and they have amazing gross margins. But uh, explain your thinking on the, the importance of the full system design. Well, Dave, interestingly, based on the data that's coming out, companies are not able to, with these chips they're using, they're not able to get optimal performance. So it's not only about getting the chip, it's also how you're using it. So this is why NVIDIA's chip is superior because it comes with a lot of frameworks on top of it. So it's very easy for companies to use it in a way where they're getting more supply out of that, that chip. So utilizations are still not running in the 80s. They're still running pretty low of these chips. And it's all about optimizing that and using them, using them more. Devon, a lot of people are concerned about competition from NVIDIA. It's coming from the hyperscalers. It's coming from, from startups to a certain extent AMD. How do you feel about NVIDIA's moat and their ability to sort of sustain margin? I mean, the margins are maybe a little bit, a little bit under pressure, but they're still mid 70%, which is higher than anything Intel ever saw when it had its monopoly. Do you see NVIDIA having as much 
runway as say maybe not 20 years but but as intel had a decade more or do you see the competition coming in and affecting you know their dominant position so the key to understand for nvidia is that they changed their product introduction cycle to one year and this is really a game changer right once you're able to introduce a new product every year it's very hard for the competition to catch up to that there is going to be competition specifically on the custom chip side, a lot of people believe that custom chips will be the dominant player for the cloud, for the hyperscalers, not for enterprise, right? That's still going to be an NVIDIA market. But even if they lose share, the pie is growing at such a rapid rate that it doesn't really matter in terms of like the opportunity set for NVIDIA. Now, and even if you look at like Apple, they don't have 100% market share. Right. There, is still, um, there is still other players in that market. So it's not necessary that you really have a dominant position uh, as, as in like 80s, 90s market share. I think as long as you innovate and you're leading the market, it's going to be a pretty significant opportunity. Yeah, I mean, the market share is nowhere to go but down. When you have 100% of the market, you're going to lose some share. But, uh, but, but to your point about the, the annual cadence, that's... Um, and the other thing is, is, if you look at Moore's Law over the course of Intel's dominance, I think it was um, 100x in 10 years. NVIDIA has improved performance a thousand X in eight years. And to your point, they're expecting another thousand yes. X mm -hmm. across the next decade. Now you mentioned Broadcom. I, I don't think last two times ago when we talked, you didn't own Broadcom. I don't think you own them now, do you? No, we own Marvell as a play on networking and custom chips just because it's a smaller company. So I think as you see revenues come through from AI, they're going to be more significant for Marvell as a percent of their revenue base. But Broadcom is also a very attractive opportunity and plays in similar way, both on the networking side and the custom chip side. Yeah, the custom chip is interesting. They've, not, they've now, I think, a three big uh, hyper, uh, Google, obviously, long term meta, and I, I believe ByteDance is the third one. Your top 10 holdings NVIDIA, Sentinel One, Cloudflare, Constellation Energy, really interesting there, Marvell, Datadog, Shopify. AMD Zscaler and Vent Electric. And then of course you also own Arista, CrowdStrike. We'll talk about Snowflake, Micron and Palo Alto. Staying with semiconductors for a minute. Um, talk to me about Marvell and then I want to I want to pick your brain on on AMD and Micron. But what's the angle with Marvell? That's a networking play, right? So Marvell is a very similar to Broadcom, it's just a much smaller scale. Mm -hmm. So they're a networking play on, on one hand, and they also do custom chips for a lot of uh, the companies. So they 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 are behind the uh, Amazon chip, the Trainium, and the the Infrancia, and they've been gaining a lot of market share in that in that market. So. We like that a lot just because it's a smaller revenue base. So as these AI revenues come through, they're going to be pretty significant. And similar to Broadcom, but maybe even to bigger extent, their current networking business is severely under pressure. So that's really been masking how well AI has been doing for them. Just because some of these networking segments, they're down like 60 plus percent year over year. So once that bottoms, which we believe will be next quarter, you're going to see the AI revenues come incremental to that rather than now just offsetting some of that weakness. Let's talk about AMD. I mean, fantastic manager in Lisa uh, Sue, uh, but they are exposed to x86. The good news is they're stealing x86 share from, from Intel. That market is in decline, as you well know, and they've got a good AI play. Why do you like AMD? So they've really been able to show very strong innovation on the CPU side, right? You, you spot on gaining share from Intel at such a rapid pace really shows you how they're kind of able to stay ahead of the game. So I think the same way they were able to gain share in the CPU market, their position to gain share in the GPU market. The feedback from customers has been pretty positive. Microsoft has used them significantly in their data center. The key will be now compared to NVIDIA, whether they offer the full suite of, of, of products and whether the companies maybe that are less sophisticated than Microsoft can get decent yields from their, uh, their GPU usage. And also Micron, it was interesting. A, a lot of people were very cautious about Micron coming into the quarter and I was not surprised at all given the demand that we see for high bandwidth memory <clears throat> and other components. Um, obviously you were in Micron uh, and, and you liked what the, the earnings were last quarter, but what's your, what's your outlook going forward? 
So Micron is a little trickier than the other two just because the memory market, unlike the processor market, has been through so much turmoil in the past. Mm -hmm. So this is really more of a value play where the valuation is very attractive, but history tells us that it's been a pretty competitive market. So the question is, will this time be different? The product itself is more complex than the commodity memory side. So our guess is that it will be, but it wouldn't surprise us if you go through some volatility compared to on the GPU side, it's a much tighter uh, competitive landscape. And, and memories have always been a highly cycl cyclical market, more so than, than processors. Um, and, and But Marotra has made the case, he made the case years ago that he's been able to smooth that out. It hasn't quite worked out uh, the way he thought. Let's talk about some of the other plays here, uh, particularly some of the um, security, cybersecurity plays. Sentinel One, I put Cloudflare in cyber. Datadog, you can argue, is in cyber with ob their observability plays. Zscaler, Jay Chaudhry's, again, another really super manager. Palo Alto Networks, Akash is doing a great job there. CrowdStrike's rebounding um, from you know the incident on July 19th, but obviously uh, I was just out at CrowdStrike. Falcon, the customers, still pretty loyal, although there's going to be some backlash. What's your overall sentiment on the cybersecurity uh, market? And then let's talk about some of these names. Well, there, as you know, the economy has been very weak and enterprise spending has been under pressure. Yeah. And while cyber cybersecurity is one of the last things that companies are cutting, they're definitely more cautious in the way they're expanding their budget. So we've really seen not really a negative impact to the companies because everybody is delivering the numbers for the most part that they promised, but you don't see massive surprises when companies report earnings. So I do feel like there has been a pretty significant economic impact to the space. Some people argue that it's competition, but you know, the way it works is once the pie is growing, there is always less competition. Once things stabilize, you do see a lot more um, competitive pressure. So I don't think this is like competition that it's like a secular negative. Uh, negative for the space. You also own Arista, uh, Jay Shri Ulau, uh, another fantastic uh, manager. Uh, in fact, we have Doug Gourlay coming in today. He's uh, been Arista for years. He's now the CEO of Cumulo uh, with potential IPO. But Arista has this very strong AI play. They're sort of the network for AI. There's a sort of AI for, for networking and there's networking for AI. They're really the, the latter. How, why do you like Arista? So Jay Shri is one of the most underappreciated manager, I would say. People always talk about these big names in like Jensen and, um, and uh, Lisa, right? But I think Jay Shri has done a fantastic job at Arista and I don't know that the market appreciates it just yet. So we do see a lot of upside because networking is gonna be one of the key ways that we're gonna see performance improvement in GPUs and in processors. So it's really mostly gonna come from improvements in memory, but more importantly, from improvements in networking. And we think we're gonna keep looking for opportunities in this space. I think this is gonna be one of the more interesting areas beyond processors because these businesses also come with very high margin profile, very similar to the processor side. And you were a Big believer in Snowflake. You've paired your holding there pretty significantly, although you're still hanging on to, to some. Um, they're under a lot of pressure, obviously. The market is completely changing. They've got new management. You know, Frank Slootman becoming the chairman, stepping down from the CEO role, Sridhar Ramaswamy. Great shops at Google. He's got a lot to prove, and, and he's really an AI sort of wartime CEO, if you will. Uh, but the market's changing on them. It's becoming more open source oriented. Uh, they're moving up stack. They've got to build the applications. I was out at uh, Snowflake Summit. Still a lot of customers there, a lot of enthusiasm, but much more competition. What's your thinking on Snowflake these days? So very interestingly, Dave, when Snowflake was coming out of this downturn, right, it was very difficult to tell if it's a cyclical problem or did they drop the ball on AI innovation. And now it's clear that they kind of dropped the ball here and they really didn't stay ahead of the curve. So even though numbers are reset much lower to a point where they can easily beat the estimates, right. the market is, that's not good enough for the market. People are looking for really big beats and new products and excitement around those products. So it's gonna be a really big job for the new CEO to deliver on that, right? Because once you kind of are behind your competitors, it's really hard to, hard to get back. So I think it's still a very attractive market. There is a big, demand for what exactly they do in terms of enterprises do need solutions. They don't all want to build their own, right? Even though it is possible to do. 
uh, but they do need to prove uh, prove their products, uh, especially in the AI part uh, part of the market. Yeah, I think so. I think it's be hard for them to compete with the hyperscalers and all the capex required to you know build out LLMs. But if they can, guys like Snowflake and Databricks, if they can infuse AI into their software and 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 really drive value that way, kind of hidden, but 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 obvious, if you know what I mean. Ivana, um, thanks so much for coming to our studio here at NYSE. Uh, Spear Invest, symbol SPRX, is yep, that right, SPRX? Great. great, check it out, Ivana. Great to see you again, thanks so much. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back with more guests at our CXO series with NYSE Wired. This is Dave Vellante, keep it right there.